and uh, you know we're back. You're listening to the Talking Box with Billy C Show. We'll give a shout out to all of our uh, listeners on ESPN New Hampshire. Glad you guys could join us today. Uh, we like to be. Uh, we're glad we're part of your family over there on uh, ESPN New Hampshire. And uh, also, uh, don't forget today's show. Uh, is being brought to you in part by my book. That's right, I'm shallow. What can I tell you? I'm going to show you the book and tell you about the book every chance I get. Tom Molino from Bondage, the Baddest Man on the Planet. It's available right now where all good books are sold. So get yourself a copy. Now, if you're looking to get a signed copy, visit our website, www.billycboxing.com, and click on the book club. Today's show is also being brought to us in part by Sal's Neighborhood Pizzeria. That's right. You want to drool and see how great his food is? Check out his website, www.salsneighborhoodpizzeria.com, or you can give him a call, 912 268 23 Two eight. That's nine one two two six eight two three two eight. Tell him Billy C sent you and demand a cannoli with your pizza. I'm telling you, man. He said he'll give it to you. He said he'll give it to you. And speaking of Sal, Rocky Senecola, he's with us right now. What's up, Sal? Hey, Billy C. How are you, buddy? Not too bad, my man. Not too bad. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. I'm telling you, this southern heat's melting this damn Yankee in me. I'm telling you that well, right well, now. Well, it makes you, well, well, you think it's, uh, you know, 50 degrees up here? Come on, man. It's miserable well, here, no, too. No, but know. I mean, you know, when I when I moved my family and I, I talked to my ex-wife when we were still married, I said, hey, Lisa, I got a great idea. Let's move down to this island off the coast of Georgia. She said, Sal, isn't the island going to be hot? Georgia's going to be hot? I said, it's not going to be any hotter than the heat wave we have in Jersey. Hey, I just didn't know the heat wave was going to last from freaking May to September. <laughs> That's right. It's a heat wave that lasts, you know, 10 months out of the year, you know. But uh, anyway, this past weekend, we got to see some good fights, man. Uh, 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 first and foremost, uh, Antonio Tarver against Steve Cunningham was the main event. But I thought that the co-main events, actually on both cards, but the co-main events, I thought stole the show. Uh, Mark uh, Marco Captain Huck is, uh, in my opinion, was the best cruiserweight in the world, Sal. And uh, he looked like he was on his way to win. And then all of a sudden, like you've said many times before, that's the beauty of this sport. One punch changes everything. And Christoph Glowaski uh, knocked out uh, Captain Huck, which shocked me, changed everything. Now his, he's on the map. What's your thoughts about that fight? You know, Billy, I, I, in all seriousness, let me tell you something. I was so excited to watch this fight. This is what boxing is all about. This is they taking two warriors, and this is looking. Did I lose you, Sal? I'm here. You have me? Yeah, yeah, you keep breaking up. Uh, so you were saying about, about, about the fight. You I just gonna, I was going to say, Billy, this is what boxing is all about. This was a display of two opponents. Two warriors wanting to fight, wanting to win. And you, you're right. Marco, uh, Marco Huck had a great record where he had a six, uh, I mean, how, how long? Six years, whatever. His reign was, uh, was with the title defenses as, 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 as and the weight division was, was going to set a record for cruiserweight, which is one more defense, a successful defense. And unfortunately, uh, for him, the fortune for, uh, uh, Gulaski, he, uh, he came up big with that. With that tenth round or eleventh round, he just he just in eleventh round he just caught the guy, and that fight changed the whole dimension, and it was over. It was over. It was great. What exciting fight! It was. It was what we needed in boxing. You had two warriors, and the fight could have gone either way. And you know when when they when it was developing, and you saw the combinations, and the punches land. Even in that last round, you know I don't know if you saw about thirty seconds before the end of the fight with the final blows. Uh, he caught him with a, a nice left hook, uh, or left uppercut. Uh, he caught him with the uppercut about 30 seconds before the fight, uh, combination and into the fight was, was taking place. And I think that uppercut did, did hurt him a little bit and set him up. Well, I, I tell you, you know, and you're right. Uh, good point. Johnny, uh, Nelson was, uh, uh, he was, uh, Hooker was about to break the record. He had tied the most successful uh, title defenses in the cruiserweight division and was about to break the record if he would have gotten by uh, Glowaski, but he didn't. Um, the thing that people were talking about was the fact that um, when, when Huck dropped Glowaski, he seemed to be in a lot of trouble. And, and to be honest with you, 
I I wouldn't have argued if the referee waved off that fight. He seemed like he was in a lot of trouble, but as soon as the the ref let them continue, it's like he he was on automatic pilot because he he started throwing some heavy punches that that really got the respect of Captain Huck because he didn't go in for the kill. Normally you would you would see a fighter especially after hurting your opponent the way he apparently had, you would have thought that Huck would have went in for the kill instead. Uh, Glowaski uh, kept him at bay and ultimately uh, came back and won the fight. I mean, what's, what's your thoughts on, on the non-stoppage, and, and do you think referees should should do that more often, or, or do you think it should be safety well, first? Well, you know me. Yeah, Billy, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit from the old school. You, 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 you choose to enter in the field of battle as a boxer and a fighter. Not, not, to, and I, and I respect the fact you do have to be careful because head trauma, it, 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 one punch will ruin your life the rest of your life. It's not kill you. So you have to have a delicate balance. But I would say, I'm lo- I, Are you there, Sal? I'm. Yeah, you, you got to stand in a place where we can hear you, my man. We keep losing you. What, what uh, were you saying? I'm. I'm gonna. I'm sitting taller now. Maybe this will work. Is that better? Well, I don't know. You you need platform sneakers, but uh, um, he's, yeah, he's yeah. gonna get those next week. You're right. Uh, I, 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 I feel good when I'm I'm taller than somebody, and I know I think I'm tall. I, I know I'm taller than you, not by much, but uh, all right. He's, and, he's, and, he's, and, yeah, like anyway, guys. I know you could still kick my butt. I know. So go ahead. For, yeah. What were you saying but listen, about the stoppage? I was saying that the, the way the fight went. I was so glad to see the referee allow the fighters to continue and that he did give a signal that it was okay and it was a good calculator risk on the referee's part and, and fortunately for Golovsky that, that he let him go. And, you know, what you said was right on, Bill. He, uh, Golovsky came back at Huck, not as a hurt opponent, uh, getting knocked down and standing up, but he let him know, hey, guess what? You caught my attention. But I'm going to still stay in the pocket. I'm going to give you a little bit to think about before you come in and finish me off. And that's exactly what he did. Because, as you said, Hawk did respect the fact he didn't jump on him. He didn't try to put him away because he was a, still a formidable foe that, that was throwing some heavy leather. And uh, conversely, when uh, Golovsky, uh hurt and put down Huck, boy, I'll tell you, he just jumped on him and finished him off. He knew he had him hurt. And when I saw him hit, hit him in the head, uh, with the first uh, first uh, right hand or so in that last round, he actually snapped his neck back about 30 seconds earlier when you are, or towards the end. And when you snap an opponent's neck back, that makes that punch because he hit him on the top half of the head with that hip, uh, hard punch. And when you snap that neck back, that's going to add a little bit more to the dimension of how powerful that punch is because your brain is actually... Uh, a little bit more uh, bouncing off the skull there, and, and, and you're shaking up when you snap that neck. And he snapped his neck back, and that's what added to that actual actual punishment that he was going to absorb. And then that follow up punch just landed square, oh. square on his face. I mean, it was like you know somebody put an X right on right on uh, Hux, uh, right in the middle of his face. And and when he went down, when he when he pulled himself up. He was in trouble. I mean, he didn't even try to hold on or anything, and and I, no. I knew he wasn't going to uh, make it. So uh, it was it, what an what a what a exciting ending for Glowaski. One question before we we talk about the uh, uh, Tarver Cunningham fight. You know, I was saying earlier in the week, Sal, that you know it's too bad, and and maybe this fight might have helped it, but it's too bad here in the states that the fans, the boxing fans, don't. Uh, they're not as receptive to the cruiserweight division as they are over in Europe. And I can't understand why, because it really gives us everything. I mean, in today's landscape of the heavyweight division, which was so different than, you know, uh, 25, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I mean, I, the further you go back, heavyweights were 180 pounds, uh, very rarely. I mean, Jack Johnson was considered a monster at 210. You know, and today's heavyweight is, you know, 6'5", 240 pounds of chiseled muscle. These guys that come in at 200 pounds, like the uh, Glowaski and, and Hucks, they give us what we want. They're action-packed. They're fast. They're in shape. They're powerful. You get the knockouts. I mean, do you think this fight could help uh, You know, the, the boxing fan be more receptive and, and, and finally, once and for all, get the cruiserweight division uh, on the map uh, where it belongs? You know... It would definitely add that credibility to the weight division and, and validate why it's going to exist. But, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, Billy, again, 
boxing has very little changes since it originated, and its evolution has has really been slow as far as open to change. You know, look at me. I, I found out about the Wayans being the day before. That was dr- traumatic enough for me <laughs> instead of the Wayans being the day up. But, but when they inserted, I think, what was it, the early 90s, they came out with the cruiserweights? No, in the 80s. That's what I'm saying. The, 80s, the, the yeah. cruiserweights, have been, they've been out in the 80s. Um, but they yeah. just never took off here. Actually, uh, an, inter- an interesting thing, I, I was reading, uh, I forget which book, it was several years ago, and they referred to a division in the 20s as a cruiserweight division. And I, now I can't find where I found it. But, I, you know, I don't know what, uh, what the weight class was or anything, but, I, you know, obviously it wasn't, it wasn't in between heavyweights because the heavyweights were uh, anybody over 175 was fighting at heavyweight. But anyway, go ahead. Well, and, and, and well you're right. And you look at all the, the great world champions from yesteryear, I mean, uh, you're looking at Joe Lewis. What was he? Two hundred two, two ten. You're looking at Rocky Marciano. He was maybe uh, one eighty nine, one ninety, one eighty five in his prime. I don't know. Uh, and these guys, even though they packed the punch and they were formal, uh, and they they could probably fight. These these athletes today are humongous. I mean, you know, they're, they're just they're just bigger. They're stronger. They're they're trained differently with the weight lifting, with the uh, stretching the muscles and everything else. So, I mean. And so the cruiser weight definitely, I guess, it was necessary for it to evolve. But, you know, when you're looking at the old school, you know, you're looking at 175 light heavyweight. Guess what's after light heavyweight? Let's just insert the heavyweight. And let's have a 185-pound guy fight a guy 230. Uh, you know, that, 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 that is how it used to be. But, uh, you know, it, it, uh, we're, 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 we're not going to be turning that clock back soon for that to recapture because there is there is a big difference and there is a big advantage if you're 240 and you're going to fight a 190 pound guy uh, well although i'd take the, that fight on anyway yeah, i know you would but yeah. uh but the the difference though is yeah we had some big guys back in in the day primo carnera and and those but primo there's so Carnara, yeah. but there's so many of them today in a sense and you know, you know the old saying: a, a, a good big guy will beat a good little guy. You know, and 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 it's kind of true. I don't you know? necessarily agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. But uh, but I mean, like you look at a Klitschko. You know, he, he's he's six six. You know, he's usually around two forty five. The guy is always in great shape. I mean, it's you know, it's tough. It's tough to get in on him. You know, I mean, a lot of people say all you got to do is get under his jab and do this and do that. And obviously, people have been trying to do that for a decade, and, and they can't. I was going to say, how many people did it? <laughs> right. You know, that's the thing. But, you know, the uh, the other fight, which was actually the main event, I, I think the the last person in the arena, they finally woke him up and uh, let him leave. Because I, I, I don't know about you, Sal, but I thought the Tarver-Cunningham fight was a total snooze fest. What was your thoughts? Well, yeah, I, I I thought that way too. I had a hard time scoring it because I was so bored by the fight. It was, uh, you know, and, and it's so funny. Look at what you just said. Here's the contrast. You had, and those two fights we're talking about right now. You had both uh, both uh, conventional fighters or orthodox fighters facing southpaws, and you know what? It shows you. The- um, I lost you. Are you there? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. You, you, you said about the uh, uh, conventional fighters facing the southpaws. Right. The, the, the two fights we're talking about, you had both those styles in the same fight. You had with Cunningham and Carver. Carver was a southpaw facing Cunningham. And, you know, you're going to have one or two results. You're going to have a walk and uh, maybe not an exciting fight like you saw with Carver and Cunningham. And, yes, it was a tough fight because, it, you know, it looked like they were just, just uh, going out there. They had a feeling outstretched in the first round that mirrored the next uh, 11. And uh, it didn't really get me too excited. And, you know, the uh, the uh, the fight, there was a couple moments where they looked like uh, that they could put them together, to punch it together. But, no, it was, a, it was a very uneventful fight. And even though Cunningham showed a little bit more aggression in the middle of the round, uh, you know, I feel Harbor came alive in round nine. And he also came alive again in, in uh, round 11. In fact, it reminded me of Peter Branson comes alive. It was Tarver coming alive. Uh, you know, you know I, 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 uh, Tarver, I thought, was 
just a, a fat version of Tarver. Hey, when, next time you uh, you were a little muffled there, so I don't know if you moved around, but okay. but yeah, and way better. So whatever you whatever you you know, um, Tarver. I can't move my finger. Yeah, well, leave it there. Um, I'm on my flip. I'm on my flip phone. Yeah, I know. You know you're, it's you're the same brand- phone that Bobby Chez has. Remember, we had we had a picture of that. Bobby Chez and I have the same flip phone. Yeah. Go figure. We 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 met we met in Tampa. And we, we took a picture together showing our flip phones because they mirrored each other. Well, both, so you, both you and Bobby need to get into the 90s at least. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, Tarver, to me, looked, first of all, he looked fat. You know, I mean, this was a guy that, that uh, you know, fought at, at light heavyweight. So, I, you know, I, he didn't look like he was in great shape. And he fought like he was con- trying to conserve his energy from the opening bell until the end. I thought Cunningham. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I thought, and he was just waiting. He was just standing flat-footed, and he was waiting for Cunningham to to you know get within his range, and he was hoping to land a good counterpunch. But I thought Cunningham, um, I, I, listen, the fight was close, so I'm not, you know it's not a rob or anything. I thought Cunningham won uh, by you know a point. But here's the thing, I think if anybody has to blame anybody, I blame Cunningham for not being a little busier. I think if Cunningham was boxing him. And moving around and circling around, he had a stationary target, you know, as long as he just used, I mean, he had the height advantage, he had the arm reach, he had the hand speed, why didn't he just box around and pull a, you know, I hate to say it because I'm so critical, but if he would have fought like a Mayweather, he steals that fight, and then he goes on to bigger and better things. Absolutely, and, and you know, Billy, again, the one facet or component that we never know what's in one's heart and mind going into the ring. And uh, because, yeah, he looked like he was quicker, he was faster, he was stronger, and he looked like he came, you know, with a little bit more uh, uh, well-conditioned. And I thought if he did move around, he was starting to be more of an aggressor, uh, Cunningham was, and and, and I think he, he could have established a combination to cut the ring off. Because Tarver, as you said, he was just standing there, in the pocket and just looking to pick shots and looking to load up on one shot. And uh, Cunningham, I think, could have outboxed him. And again, why? Why didn't he do that? Why didn't he try to change his game plan? You know, it's something. When you Again, the definition of insanity. If you always do what you've always done, you're going to never get the right result that you want. Or you always do the same thing over and over and expect different results. That's, that's the damn thing. You're in the middle of a fight. You know how it's going or you have an idea. You, you, can you change your, your, your style? Do you see the opening? You know, you, you, you're right in front of the guy. You're plotting. It's like a uh, cuff and link. Here's one, here's the other. Let's go back and forth. But, hey, guess what? Let me start moving a little bit more lateral to my right, to my left. Let me throw him off a little bit. You change it up. you got to win. Again, Aaron Parr's favorite saying, you got to fight to win. And none of these guys really wanted to take it to the next level to pump it up. It was almost like they were uh, uh, both, no pun intended, cruiser. Cru- they were heavy, but cruising for, for a decision. Uh and, and and a draw at that or something, you know, is easy. Hey, Sal, um, today, uh, uh, a great uh, insight on those fights. Um, today, I, you know, I have my, my topic of the day, and I wanted to get your thoughts because you, uh, uh, last time uh, uh, we were down there together, we did the uh, Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, and, and although we all had a great time uh, eating your great food at your restaurant and uh, hanging out with all the boxing fans and, of course, uh, Ray Mercer and Michael Mora, et cetera, um, yeah, it was great. We, we watched the fight. And, you know, we all had some thoughts, and you and I have talked about this. Uh, I know we talked the next morning, and, you know, people are still talking. My question to everyone today, and now I want to get your thoughts, is do you think Manny Pacquiao can rebound from that fight i mean you know he it was questionable if he was still the same manny pacquiao going into the fight he sustained the injury that he complained about he went and had the surgery they're talking about a, uh, coming back uh and they're they got a couple of major names that they're mentioning amir khan danny garcia possibly for his comeback fight um you know his first comeback fight um do you think he can rebound or do you think you know that that maybe his best days are behind him, and and you know maybe he should call it a career. I mean, I, you know, not thinking the way you think and and all of that stuff. But w- no, what do you think about Manny no. Pacquiao? If I was to really be objective here, Billy, and, and 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 be smart and put it on paper, you know, Manny Pacquiao had a stellar career. There was that question after he got knocked out. So 
suspect of how good is he going to be when he returns. And you know, the first fight he had, he didn't look all that great. Second fight, he came on a little better. I think Manny Pacquiao can make a respectful return, but against lesser opponents than a Mayweather or, or a world-class champion. I, I, I don't know if he can capture that again. Again, you know, I, I, I saw uh, a couple things in the last couple fights with Pacquiao. And once you get knocked out, you, you know, a fighter, when he's undefeated or he's never been off his feet, and, and coming from me too, you feel you're an elitist. You're, you're, in a, you're in a ring yourself. There's nothing that you can face that's not going to be a formal that you're not going to uh, feel you could you could destroy. You're going to take it. You could you could dish out and take. And when you get knocked out, you have just in the back of your mind the good ones could come back, the great ones could go on, but uh, you know you still have that 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 margin of error or doubt now. That guess what? I I I can get hit by a sledgehammer and I'm going to go down. Um, the bottom line is. Can Pacquiao face a Mayweather again? Unfortunately, I'm not going to pay for that fight. Uh, I think it'll be the same story. Uh, but I think that uh, I think Manny Pacquiao can make a, a, a formal comeback against some some opponents that you've mentioned that aren't really of the upper echelon or the world class championship caliber that you and I are used to or you and I are wanting to see in these fighters. But I, I think he can make a comeback and maybe he'll, he'll get a couple of two or three easy fights, and uh, not easy fights, but uh, respectable fights, and he'll, he'll still uh, be able to handle these opponents. And then they'll catapult him or try and get him into a leverage either against a, a Mayweather or somebody else that's champion. But, you know, I, I think Pacquiao, he fights, uh, he fights uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez. I think he fights somebody else. I think he fights one of these young guys that really do show like they're going to be uh, someone to reckon with later on. I think he's going to have trouble. And you know what? Like I said, he's got in the back of his mind. He was knocked out once. He's gonna he could get knocked out again. That's you know, my thought. You know the, the the thing is, is that I think what makes it really hard uh, for a guy like Pacquiao is, you know, when he was at his best, he was he was just a, a killer type fighter. You know, he was like a you know killer be killed attitude. And and I think when you lose that, you're not the same. You know, and and you know when Manny's not. You know, going in for those brutal beatings that he used to inflict on his opponents, it's not the same. You know, so so I think he's more vulnerable to getting caught. And I, you know, I'm not so sure he needs the money. You know, and and he's he's into the politics. I, you know, I, I I'm shocked that he's even going to continue. I mean, he's got nothing left to prove. Maybe it's just no. I, it's just like with you. You know, like you don't want to walk away. With the last image and all the fans' minds, a loss. Well, and, that, and that's true. And, and you know what? I share that. I think Pacquiao shares that. It's like a monkey on your back. It's going to haunt you. If you don't end your career or go out the way you feel that as that your years validated your existence in a, in a ring and call yourself a fighter and a boxer, you have some unfinished business. And I think Pacquiao, in all due respect, he does have some unfinished business. Now, is he going to jump right up to a title fight? No. But can he come back and go out a winner against a, a, a formidable opponent that has some credibility? Yeah, I think he could do that. And I think it will validate to him, you know, his career. And, and maybe, uh, as you said, he'll get that monkey off his back and see if he wants to go on. Because, because Billy, I'm telling you, when you're undefeated, when you, have a, when you have a chin that's been hit with hammers and nothing bothers you, then all of a sudden you get a little older. You realize there are, are things that happen to to your, your, your brain when you do take a, a punishment that uh, you might be destroying some brain cells here and there. Oh, God, by right the way, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human being. I'm, I'm a mortal. I might be vulnerable. And you know what? Then you, you're old enough. You say, hey, the prize has always been worth the price. And when you're younger, that prize is worth the price. You want to walk on hot coals by the day and you want to sleep on a bed of nails at night. That was me. When you get a little older, and you realize, guess what? This is real life. Do I want to play with my grandchildren one day? Do I want to be around later? Do I want to have a life, a quality life? And it, it hurts me to see a lot of these fighters that do not have a quality life anymore. And, you know, maybe that bloom of doubt creeps in one fighter's mind, and they can actually have 
that conversation with themselves. Is that prize still worth the price? Because that price you have to pay can be your life. And uh, maybe you mature, you get older, and you realize maybe it's not. Maybe you lose that edge. And once the fighter loses the edge, guess what? He's got to retire. Because, like you said, the Pacquiao has passed. The, 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 the animal, the hunter, the, the, the tiger, who you got to prove who you are to everybody. You'll take anybody on. All of a sudden, that fire has been doused out with a little water. And if you don't have that bird, if you don't feel you're invulnerable, if you don't feel like you, you're, you're going to be champion again, then maybe it's time to pack it in and do it on your way if you can. That's my thoughts. Oh, great. Great stuff. And, uh, Hey Sal, I got your shirt on. I got your Jersey Hall of Fame shirt on. You know, so I just, uh, you know, I, I'm wearing it. You know, I'm wearing it out. I, I'm gonna have to grab another one next time I see you. But uh, hey, I love you. We're getting more made, and I'm, I'm gonna probably also. I think we'll have one or two of your fans that are interested in getting a copy. So I'm gonna have more of those made, and we'll get them to you, buddy. Sounds good. Hey, listen, uh, we'll be looking forward to you next week. Now we we got you. I know we're juggling you around a little bit, but we're gonna do it again next week on Wednesday. Uh, we got some uh, programming issues with uh, with the show, so uh, we'll catch you again uh, uh, next Wednesday instead of uh, your normal day, all right? Well, Billy, I, I really appreciate it, and it's great to share some time with your fans, and you've got a great, great group here following you, and, and I'm just proud and happy and humble all in the same breath to be a part of it. And uh, if I can, I'm, I'm getting little pockets of, of some of my old fans and, and family members and friends and that, uh, that are listening in now, too, so I'm very excited about that. And, and if I could give a little shout-out to uh, to my friends, their family up in Boston, Lynn and Michael Brizolaro, they're, uh, they're listening in on this show right now, and uh, along with other people right up in Boston. So uh, thank you so much for your time, Billy, and I really appreciate all the opportunities and having a chance to speak to your fans. No problem, my man, and uh, we're all looking forward to uh, uh, you next time, all right? Thanks, Bill. I'll talk to you soon. Give me an email or shout, and we'll, we'll follow up. Thanks, buddy. Sounds Take good. care, guys. All right, brother. Take care. That's my man, Sal, Rocky, Senecola. And uh, if you're looking to get uh, the best food that you can at in St. Simons Island, Georgia, you got to go to Sal's, man. 912-268-2328. 912-268-2328. Listen, I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, Alex Perpali and I will be talking about this week's blast from the past, the late, great former world champion and boxing hall of famer, and arguably uh, in the top 10 pound for pound all-time great list, Joe Gans. We'll be back in two. Talking.